Hi, I uh, a bit different from uh, Christo and Oleg from Vivino. I know something about e-commerce. I also drink wine, but uh, I know a bit more about e-commerce. I'm from uh, the Danish company called Minto. Uh, Minto is helping local fashion boutiques, small boutiques, and we have more than a thousand to drive sales from being online. That's basically it. So I'm gonna, in the next, hopefully 15 minutes I'll be able to, uh, just a quick about me, uh, a short about Minto, and then the focus on how we uh, decided to focus on performance and how it is, even though you're small or big, it's a matter of how can I spend my money to get the most out of it. So about me, uh, my name is Melde uh, Silbo. I am uh, a group CDO at the company, chief <coughs> digital officer. So I'm focused on the digital part of marketing and the platform. Uh, I've previously uh, done online marketing at uh, Saxo.com and I was the, the CMO at Saxo.com until uh, last year where I joined Minto. And uh, that's also why the, when Morten, he asked me, can you come by and, and tell something? I was, yeah, I've only been there for nine months. Maybe I'm not in a position of telling great stories. I haven't been part of the entire journey. Uh, but I can easily come by and, and give a, a bit of knowledge sharing about what we have done in the last nine months and, and what I have learned from that. So who Minto is? Um, we are a company based in, uh, in Denmark with our headquarter. Uh, we have an office in, in Oslo, in Amsterdam. Uh, we have a tech office in Poland and we run business as well in Sweden. The biggest market being Norway. Uh, in basic, we are more than 100 young, uh, enthusiastic people trying to create something and, uh, and, and scale a business that is pretty much about helping small boutiques get an even bigger share of the pie uh, against the big giants uh, like Zalando and Boost and other ones taking up shares of the market. Why we do it is because there's Definitely a big market in Europe, uh, more than 70 billion uh, euros being spent e-commerce wise on apparel and fashion. It has a growth, but we see that in-store retail is even bigger. In-store retail is where all the stock is placed. So our CEO and founder, Conrad, he has said there's more than enough clothing out there. Why do we have to ask fabrics to make even more stock it in our inventory to be able to sell it online. Why not take all the inventory already out in the stores, get it online and then start selling it that way. So our vision is to connect all fashion boutiques in Europe so you can find yourself. And by find yourself, we mean have the biggest selection so you are able to find exactly what fits you. How we do that is by uh, connecting through APIs, feeds, manual solutions, fully automated solutions uh, to all the small physical stores and then get their stock data at the same time. So we can show all the products on one page and then send the order to the local shop, sending the order and, and packing it. So we connect uh, boutiques. We also connect uh, solutions, POS systems, point of sale systems, uh, brands that are into the e-commerce business and, and might not be re fully ready for doing it by themselves. And we do it by connecting all of these with data. So my focus here is to go down in how we manage to up-prioritize performance marketing and take the amount of money we have, spend it even smarter, and how we decided to do that. The issue was that uh, before I started, they had had a, a good growth. Um, they had been really branding focused for a couple of years. So they were in a competitive market where the big players, they take market shares. Everybody knows Zalando. Almost everybody knows Boost now. They run a lot of campaigns. So uh, we had to, or pre prior to me, uh, they had to do a lot of campaigning. That's the easy way of competing. Go down in discounts, 10% uh, this year, next year to beat that, you have to go 15, then 20, then 25. 
it's not sustainable at all. And what you're going to do is push the shops and the brands away from you. Because nobody wants to work with a platform that constantly runs on discounts. Even though it makes sale, fashion brands are about having the, the right selection and being, being a brand. It's not about price. Um, the issue was also that they had seen a, a kind of a stagnation in, in the growth. And the forecast for 2017 was a decline. So looking at a company, nobody wants a decline. What is a decline? Decline is, is uh, losing your investors, uh, losing your employees, uh, going down in cost to marketing, then it goes even further down. It's just the, the wrong path to go down. And even though they spent even more on marketing, they didn't see any growth in the way they did. So the, the only thing they did right in some eyes was to invest in digital uh, marketing and performance marketing to aim for a positive ROAS. We all know that you spend one, you get more. If, if you don't, then, well, is there a matter of doing it? But it's kind of difficult to compare that when you're also doing a lot of branding and offline. I'll get into that. So the goal I was, uh, I was set when I started uh, was that uh, we had to get back on track. We had to make sure that this hockey stick that everybody wants, we need to find a solution. We need to find the scalable, sustainable model where we can get brands and shops closer. We don't want a discount, but how can we then beat last year's performance if we're not able to run even another sale campaign with big discounts? And we wanted to find a model where if we put money in, we get even more back so we can reinvest what we get and kind of get it rolling. The solution that uh, we decided on um, and have, uh, have uh, worked with for the last nine months is uh, what we call performance in-housing, performance scaling, performance branding. And when I talk performance, it's kind of marketing is two schools. There's the fun, creative, uh, placing a logo, finding the right colors, all the fluffy stuff, right music in the ears. And then there's performance, being measured, look at the numbers, spend money, get money. Kind of two different uh, areas, but it's often the same department doing it. So for performance in-housing, um, we decided to take it in from our agency. We hired two people, uh, one taking care of the Nordic markets, and one taking care of the Benelux market. Their primary focus was AdWords shopping campaigns. So if you have a feed of a lot of products, we have more than a couple of hundred thousand products. So then we take a feed, upload it to Google and say, run campaigns. Then you do a lot of rules and tweaking, but you don't do manual campaigns in that way. Then we had DSA. DSA is really smart. If you don't know DSA, then look into it if you have a page with or a site with more than a hundred pages. Because either you have to manually create campaigns for each page, or you can let Google, which already have all your pages in their index, just decide what to run campaigns on and match it to queries that you wouldn't even imagine. So it's automat automatically generating campaigns for you. Then they, of course, also run some basic text ads. We all know them. Uh, also for the brand, if people type in Minto, have a campaign for that, that you can help sort people into the right direction. And the secondary focus was uh, remarketing, remarketing, affiliate and Bing ads. So get people in, show them the banners about what they have looked at, get affiliates to send, send you some, uh, some traffic and do a bit of Bing advertising. There's still some people using Bing. Now we have uh, seen a great performance from that. We have decided to uh, split it up even more in markets. So we are right now, um, if somebody is, uh, knows somebody, we are looking for a Danish uh, <coughs> digital marketing manager and a Swedish one as well. Uh, we have the two other ones. And they are going to be even more responsible. So instead of just being a digital marketing, which is the normal way of looking at it, you only have to do AdWords, they get a lot more responsibility. You get a bunch of money, show me how you're going to use it, and then it's kind of a market focus. So give, give pop, uh, the, the person the responsibility 
and the, the way of, of doing their job the way they want to do it. Another important one is how we have decided to, uh, to scale. Uh, previously, we used only 30% of our spend on digital channels. Uh, we have quickly shut off all TV advertising. Uh, that's several, several millions uh, used on, on TV advertising, boss ads, and so on. Uh, and now it's 90% digital. Full on, don't do what the competitors do just because they do it. Boost is running a lot of campaigns, yes, but we are not able to do the same. We're not going to win a battle where we try to do the same, but just at a, at a lower budget. We have a lower budget than they have. We're not in the same game. There's no reason to, to compete in that. So uh, what we looked into was, why do we measure each and every penny of those 30% used on performance marketing? when we don't even look at the 70% and what they're bringing in. We couldn't see any results from running TV ads, uh, newsletter ads, big banners all over the city. We saw no return on it. But we took the small amount that really worked and said, you have to do exactly uh, what you're already spending or we're going to shut it off. So turn it even more down and making it a smaller uh, chart. So what we decided was to look into how can we uh, find a solution where we are able to scale performance marketing. Be able to give a bit more to get even more. So we took our customer acquisition costs, how much does it cost to get a customer, and compared it to the lifetime value. So instead of just looking at the first basket size, then how much is it going to uh, generate in revenue moving forward. That factor is quite easy to take in Google Analytics and make a custom metric that you just take the, the difference from basket size to custom lifetime value and create a custom metric you can use to optimize your AdWords campaigns. The last part is performance branding. In, um, in, in branding, you normally talk about awareness, how, how big a share of the population know our brand have seen it, heard about it, uh, and are familiarized with it. But the way we look at it is why only show your brand to a person when you can actually get the person to, f to have an equation with, with your brand. Get the person on the site. So normally you would say that non-converting sessions is a bad thing because it's, it's costing you money, but you don't get anything back. But we look at non-converting sessions as a way, a way of branding. Because now that person has been into the site, they know our name, they know what we uh, have on the shelves, they know, they've seen that we have fashion um, items on the, in, the, in the window. And we are able to show them a couple of more times using display remarketing to make sure that they just get to know Minto. So no, you don't get the same reach for the same amount of money but there's no reason to look at non-converting sessions as a bad thing. It's just a big chunk of people that have just known your brand and it's measurable. Then um, we do affiliates. Affiliates is uh, becoming a, a tricky uh, part of the game, but it's, uh, it's working. If, if you find good affiliate networks, you can get a lot of traffic. You only pay when it works, just like dental media. It's, it's uh, no cure, no pay. So it's, it's a great way to, uh, to be able to scale a bit. And the most important for us is to, instead of looking at how can we just scale our business, then how can we improve it? Because we all know Momondo. Momondo haven't spent trillions of dollars. They have spent a lot of money. But they also get people back because they get a good experience. You get a good experience using Momondo. It works. It's, uh, it's good. It's, it's, it's a great experience. So what we do is trying to deliver a better and better, better custom experience each and every day. That's our main goal. Then we are, of course, at the same time scaling. But our main focus is to spend our money wiser and at the same time improve our product. The result uh, we have seen uh, is that we managed to get out of, uh, of 17 with 42% uh, uplift in revenue. 
we had seen it for the first half year go quite fast down, but uh, we managed to save it. Um, we have seen an uplift in uh, non-campaign periods without any discounts of more than 100%, and an uplift from AdWords alone of uh, 300%. Uh, even though we are now spending more on digital, we are actually spending less money in total. So we also get a more positive uh, robust. To dive, dive into one of the markets and the dynamics that have worked for us is uh, if we looked at the, the Dutch market before, we saw that all channels almost except social for the start of the year was declining. So what we did was invest heavily only in AdWords traffic, go for what works and scale it. We bought in 443% more traffic through AdWords. It generated alone 345% growth from AdWords. But what happened to all the other channels was that we didn't even invest more or more time or more money in the other channels. It just has a spillover effect because people get back. And you, if you know something about attribution models, then you also know that it's, it's a tough game and it's, it's not always the only channel that have been part of the journey. All the other ones are also playing it. So even though we only invested heavier in AdWords, we saw an increase in all of them. So only measuring our AdWords, no, we're not getting the same amount of what we invest. But in total, we saw an uplift of 150%. That's it for me. And um, just like our uh, CEO says, there's more than enough clothing out there. Sh uh, support your small local shop boutique instead of the big ones.